The martial arts film genre is known for its many iconic symbols and tropes, with their over-the-top dialogue, crazy muscular stars, and long-standing cultural impact. One thing not often noted, however, is the way in which martial arts films make impactful use of editing and camera work to enhance action sequences and make them into important pieces of storytelling. American action movies generally use handheld camera work, close-up shots, and quick-cut editing to depict fight sequences. This serves one general purpose to hide stunt actors and to create a confusing, realistic atmosphere. Most American action movies don't utilize real martial artists. As a result, big name stars often have to be switched out for stunt doubles in the middle of a major fight sequence. Action sequences of this kind can still have an impact. The shaking camera and quick cuts create confusion, making the action seem more visceral, almost documentary-like. However, fight sequences edited in this way don't usually serve to advance the story in a meaningful way in and of themselves. The only storytelling comes at the end, with the fight's outcome. Kung Fu films, on the other hand, utilize action sequences to set up dynamics, enhance character development, and further the narrative. One way it does this is through montage-style editing. Most notably, martial arts films make heavy use of overlapping editing. This type of shot combination was utilized by Soviet montage filmmakers in the silent era most notably by Sergei Eisenstein in his film Battleship Potemkin. In the famous plate smashing sequence, a sailor smashes a plate in an act of rebellion. Although the action should take only but a moment, Eisenstein used 10 separate shots to show the complete motion. This kind of overlapping editing repeats action in a way that hardens the impact of a particular moment. Take a look at this sequence from the 2010 martial arts film Yip Man 2. Notice how the punch consists of three distinct sequences, the swing, the impact, and the fall. The swing begins in a wide shot, one where it is clear the protagonist has not yet even gotten up from the mat, giving an indication of the antagonist's brutality. This continues into the second shot, which uses an over-the-shoulder shot to convey the first impact of the punch, following through the contact. The filmmaker then presents us with a point-of-view shot from the boxer, displaying Yip Man's reaction to being punched. There is then a repetition of the impact, this time midway through the swing, making it feel twice as brutal. The film then cuts back to Yip Man's reaction, this time following him in subsequent shots as he falls to the ground, this time in point of view. We see the reactions of the crowd from Yip Man's perspective, but only in fleeing, blurred moments. In total, there are 11 shots, for just this one punch. Contrast that to this sequence from Captain America The Winter Soldier, an action film which utilizes an entirely different approach to editing. Each action beat consists of only one to two shots. This punch in particular consists of only two shots, the build-up and the impact. Even though this particular fight is supposed to be taking place between two people with superhuman abilities, it somehow carries less weight. This comes down to the editing, and the way in which the action is cut to feel more visceral. As important as the number of cuts, or the shots themselves, and the way they are composed in succession. Martial arts fight sequences use a variety of wide, medium, and close-up shots to document the ever-evolving dynamic of a fight. Wide shots, generally, are used for scale, particularly when a protagonist is faced with more than one opponent. Medium shots are used for showing the majority of the action. Full-body shots easily convey athleticism, physique, and skill. Medium shots are also good for establishing power dynamics. A medium or close-up shot at a low angle is indicative of power, often referred to as a hero shot. The lower the shot becomes, the more dramatically in power the protagonist is. The opposite is also true. A high angle shot communicates vulnerability. A high shot in the middle of a fight could mean that a protagonist is in trouble, or is the current underdog in the fight. Close-ups, most often, are used for impact. Close-ups are used to make hits seem much more impactful, realistic, and for the pain to feel much more visceral. When combined with an appropriate sound effect, the combination is twice as painful. Close-ups are also useful for showing reactions to certain action beats, whether that be by bystanders or victims. Used in succession, martial arts fights should look something like this. Uh. 
Notice how the shots are used with a wide variety and the camera remains generally stable. This is because martial arts movies not only want you to see the action, but to understand it. Like cinema itself, kung fu fights are about a lot more than just high-flying kicks and dramatic battle cries. They are a language, one used to further narrative. Form, as much as content, makes up the importance of cinema. This idea extends across all genres, including the kung fu film. What matters is not only what's being shown, or who's being punched, but how. Thank <laughs> you.